takes one key. Whether you rent or buy, the keys are literally identical. So I can take the key from one cat, put it in another one, turn it on, to give you an idea of just how the big the problem is, I'm 6'3", and some of these weeds are just as tall as me. Some are even taller. Neighbors told me the county used to come through here and mow all of this, but as you can see, they haven't been through well, here the in quite a while. Call it the biggest single loss in its history. It had never lost three people in the same tragedy. And after talking to friends and family who knew Gary Miller and their family, that destruction you mentioned was nothing when you compare it to the damage done in the hearts of those who knew I these three people. I want to find out just how much money we're shoveling well, after to row pay of for empty shelving roads. shows you just how serious the damage was, and it's not just about the money these tools are worth, it's means to an end. The thieves can use the tools they stole here to hit their next victim. The constant images of gang violence in Yakima would be easy to simply ignore, especially for a family like the McHalesons, but it's closer to them than they might think. 16-year-old Joe says the presence of drugs is inescapable for kids his age. It wouldn't be hard to, per se, go into school in 15 minutes, be able to find some drugs. So you can walk to school, ask for drugs, and walk home with the drugs? Yes. It's that easy. Mm -hmm. In quiet suburban cul-de-sacs like this one, you're not likely to hear gunshots or police sirens, but if you listen closely on a Friday or a Saturday night, you may hear the music of partying teens, drinking alcohol, and doing drugs. And whether they or you realize it, it's the deep pockets of the suburbs that are funding the deadly business of drug dealers and gangbangers in the city. Former gang members and drug dealers say the same thing. But we're selling to everybody, you know what I mean? And, I and that includes not. white kids in the suburbs? Yes, we were selling to them too. Believe it or not, it's out there. You know, and they're the ones driving the nice cars, you know what I mean? And, and those are the ones that nobody ever looks at either. Drug abuse is not an issue of race or social status. It's a $100 million business in the Yakima Valley, nearly all run by or connected to gangs, which means the casual pot smoker who complains about violence in the valley is also directly keeping the violent gangs right here. Smart business goes where the money is. Methamphetamines, um, um, ice, uh, uh, all those hardcore drugs, it's not prejudice. You know what I mean? Anybody can get into it. Anybody's, and everybody's doing it, as a matter of fact. You know what I mean? Not just the gang member. Drugs are everywhere. You know what I mean? They're everywhere. I don't care what anybody says. They're up there in the suburbs. They're here in the valley. I mean, they're everywhere. Action News has learned drugs were directly related to at least two of the killings in Yakima in recent months. And just a few weeks ago, $5 million in ecstasy was seized on I-82 during a traffic stop. Like pot and booze, ecstasy is a popular drug of choice for teenagers and college kids. And where you find drugs, you often find weapons. KIMA found trading guns for drugs is a common practice here. Which gets us back to the violence. You ought to lay the connection between that. I mean, it's pretty obvious that unless there was a demand for those things, then there wouldn't be so much of a supply. It's why that dime bag bought behind the school likely didn't start in your buddy's basement. It started with major grows from distributors tied to organized crime from Seattle to Mexico. Call it apathy or ignorance. Trying to convince yourself there isn't a problem won't prevent your kids from being next. They can believe, come to a point where maybe not in my school, not in my, not in my household. But it is happening in our schools, in our households. It's why smoking a joint on Friday helps pay for a drive-by on Saturday. I'm Peter Bukowski, Action News. Well, listen, David, I came to the State Fair hoping I could get two meals for under 1,500 calories. Even if you can resist the funnel cakes, it's tough. Giving in to temptation, though, is what fairgoers told me makes the State Fair so special. Fairgoers bustle through the gates, and it doesn't take long before the sights, sounds, and smells of fair food hit. What's the best part of the fair? The <laughs> food. Why? It's greasy and delicious. But what about a healthy option? I searched the grounds to find some diet-friendly food and found John Buchter's stand, one of only two places I found with lettuce that doesn't come on your cheeseburger. Why don't you think there are more healthy options at the fair? Uh, because most people won't buy them. That's what basically it is. And just about everyone I talked to was okay with that. They, they like to eat uh, uh, different than they eat at home. I mean, this is kind of a treat for them. In a place where potatoes become all sorts of salty snacks and even apples become candy, there are no shortages of treats, just as long as you're more concerned with filling your stomach than filling the food pyramid. I don't eat before I come to this. 
Now you can make the calorie count with things like salmon and hummus, but most people, they're gonna take things like deep fried Oreos. So will I. <laughs> Live from the State Fair, Peter Bukowski, Action News. My car. Pam Perez so still wakes awesome. up every morning in pain. Nearly eight years after an accident totaled her car just blocks away from her house. Things got even more painful when her subsequent lawsuit got pushed back over and over. We spent six of those years getting bumped, as they say, uh, schedule a court date and they don't have room for you. So they reschedule and it takes a whole other year to reschedule. And the court can bump people like Pam as often as they need to. What do they say when you get bumped? Sorry. That's it. Um, too many criminal cases. So many cases, in fact, the county courts are backed up by the hundreds. And with things like speedy trial laws not affecting civil cases, the DA's office has focused on cutting into its criminal backlog. We are. We are every day addressing that. We are doing everything we possibly can to get rid of that backlog, to move these cases and get current on it so that the citizen can take advantage of their right to a trial and a divorce or a civil matter. Cutting into the backlog will take some time. That means asking people who are already waiting to have their cases heard to wait even longer. Perez settled out of court when she heard her case would get bumped a sixth time. So you waited. <clears throat> six years to go to court and never even got to go. Never got to go. Never got to uh, speak my piece to or state my story to my peers, the jury. But getting your case heard in front of a judge or a jury is more than just scheduling. The difficulty is, is you only have a limited amount of resources. You only have a limited number of bodies in the office as prosecutors that can handle these cases. There is a concern amongst the judiciary that we don't have enough judicial officers to hear all the cases. When cases can't be heard, people simply have to wait or look for alternatives. Did you explore other options? Like what? I don't know what the other option was. Um, I wouldn't do it again. We have so little capacity for them, it's hard to meet everybody's needs. So there are people that walk away from our system saying, you know, I've been bumped three times, this isn't fair. And, and, and I agree with them. There are laws to make things fair for criminals, but nothing for someone like Pam. I feel like there should have been something to protect me. Pam Perez's wait is over, but there are dozens more like her getting bumped repeatedly so the court can deal with drug dealers and gangbangers. Speedy justice for some and a long, painful wait for others. I'm Peter Bukowski, Action News. This bird is somewhat of a local celebrity, at least around Lake Aspen. An arrow shot straight through this goose and out the other end. When I saw the goose every day, every day, every night with that arrow in it, I decided that someone had to help it. So we enlisted the help of Marsha Flam from the Raptor House Rehab Center, who'd received more than 100 calls about the goose over the last few months. And the teamwork helped this wild goose chase pay off. Did you think we actually would? No, I didn't. It was pure luck that we caught it. We rushed the goose to Summit View Kawichi Vet Clinic to see if Dr. Ken Lust could get the arrow out and the goose back to perfect health. Until we took the x-ray, I mean, we didn't really know where it went or, or how deep it was. You know, certainly if she's been, you know, living for the last couple of months with it in there, it couldn't have been too serious. And as it turns out, this was one fortunate foul. I guess if you're going to be shot, you know, and you're a goose, that's a good place. And it just kind of went right through the muscle and along the, the keel and right back out. And, um, she's pretty lucky. The arrow that had made this bird famous was removed without a problem. That means this goose is far from a goner. Probably a couple weeks of rehab, keep flushing the wound, and when the wound closes, the goose comes back to Lake Aspen. And when she is released, this mother goose will have one heck of a story to tell. I'm Peter Bukowski, Action News.